Good morning everybody, so we're coming here because it's incredibly bright, so the S13 is just peaking there. I'm so fucking excited for today. Today I've been waiting for this video, been waiting for this day for so long. Today we're doing one of the, one of the five sick mods for the S13 and one of the five mods which you need before we can go bigger horsepower. And I'm actually most excited for this one because I'll get onto it. I'm so excited for this one because it looks sick and it has like a serious purpose and it should totally change the car. I'm out of breath because I'm so excited. <laughs> so yes, if you haven't noticed in the title of the video, we are installing parts of an Audi R8 to the S13. So we got two bags of parts there, full of stuff for an Audi R8 and I cannot wait to put them on. But first of all, remember in the last episode we were having issues trying to find a bolt for the PCV valve. I've gone to three bolt specialists today and not one of them have an M14 1.25 bolt for the PCV valve. So <laughs> I found a bit of an ugly bodge but it should work. Well, I was about to say, I've actually been and uh, got a right bolt for the PCV valve, but it was wrong again. I actually don't know what size that is, um, but we're at a state now where I need to fucking drive this car, and I actually don't know what size bolt that is. So I know some people in the last episode said just put the PCV valve in, then a bit of tube, then a blank. That was probably a good suggestion. I have thought about doing that, but shit, I almost fell off then. Uh, but I haven't got a size blank, but for the time being, I've just found that this incredibly big bolt fits in and it works so that's gonna stay there for the time being I've just started the car and it works so I'm absolutely sick of not having a driving car because of a fucking vacuum leak what bolt so that looks absolutely horrendous there but ask me if I care because today I don't so I just chucked a little bit of braided line on that hose there just to make it look a little bit less like a fucking bolt just put in it. So without further ado, let's unbox the things I've been waiting for. So we've got two packages here. So this one is a wiring loom. Two wiring looms. So why do I need some of those? These, I'm going to get them out one. Two, three, four. What do you think these are, guys? Yes, they are coil packs from an Audi R8. The R8 coil packs. Absolutely buzzing to have these. So, the reason you get these, what just, what just went with the car? So, as you know, this car is from 1989, and these coil packs are also from 1989, probably pre 1989. So, as you can imagine, they're crap, and they also don't provide a decent spark. Like, if you remember from the video when I was checking for the misfires, um, when I was arcing the coil pack, you could hardly even see a spark. It should be a lot stronger than that. So what people do is, when people are going big power in these engines, they put the arc coil packs from Audi R8. So that is a, a legit R8 coil pack. Don't get mixed up with the VW GTI ones. This is a coil pack from an Audi R8. Uh, these are NGK ones. So you can get the MGK ones, or the ones from Audi, which are pretty much the same thing. So we've got the NGK ones. I've checked with the CA boys. These co these coil packs are the right part numbers. And how am I going to get an S13 to run coil packs from an Audi R8? There's a company called Boss Wiring, and they're on Instagram, and they make personalized looms for anything, absolutely anything. Um, so here I've got a personalized loom, so that's the SR, that's the S13 CA18 one, and then it goes to four Audi R8 uh, coal pack um, plugs. Uh, and look at it, it's nicely heat ring, it's nicely heat shrink. Look at it, it looks beautiful. We've got the ground there. And we also have an igniter bypass. So do you remember when we was fitting the engine and we thought it was the igniter that was causing the engine not to start? You have so many igniter problems with these cars. Like they're so brittle. If you go over a big bump, they break and then the car won't start. This is an igniter bypass. It bypasses the igniter and the coil packs are strong enough to just go straight coil on plug. So I'm very excited to install these. One of the one of my CA guys has said that this made the biggest thing. This was the best thing he ever did to his car. It ran so much better with these call packs. So I cannot wait. Let's put them on. Let's put them on. So huge thank you to Boss Wiring sending out that wiring loom. Uh, their links and everything will be on the screen right now. Huge thank you to you guys. They actually have these S chassis to R8 call pack ones straight on the shelf ready to go. And they can also make any sort of custom loom for you. So give them help if you need any wiring. Even if you just want a wiring that looks better. My loom on here looks absolutely atrocious and 
I'm just happy to have something which actually looks professional. So, so here is what my call pads and the call pad wiring loom looks like before. It's old, it's crap, it's disgusting, and that's me trying to tidy it up as well with the tape. But first of all, let's get these call packs off. We have a couple more grounds. This just has one small ground, but we have two grounds in this one. So we have an engine ground and a chassis ground. Um, but that means we can remove this horrible igniter. You don't know what I'm talking about. Just the thing under there, under there. That is the igniter. It looks absolutely disgusting. It's so brittle, it's crap, it's old, and I'm just so happy we can finally get that removed out of the way and just put that bypass through. So right, here they are. Let's see how nice and snug they fit. Oh, they just sit like that. No, it's not very snug. <laughs> but they, they, they sit quite tall. <laughs> but they sit a lot snugger. And you press them down. I'm definitely going to the bracket because right now that just looks silly. <laughs> so this is what we're looking like. It does look silly because they're so tall. You can buy a bracket which basically sits between this gap here uh, and then it's just like a flat bracket. So um, I didn't think they would sit that tall. You don't, most people say you don't really need them because as you say they are quite sturdy. Um, but just for the sake of looking for how it looks, I'm definitely going to try and get one of those brackets because they sit mega tall i mean it stands out that's what we like boys we like to stand out uh, but yeah sounds a little bit too much in my opinion but let's ground it take off the igniter uh, put the ignite bypass on and then start it and see how it runs i'm so intrigued okay so these need two grounds so we've got an engine ground uh, which I've just put to where the original ground is on the head uh, I just needed to use a bigger washer, but that's ground on the head and then we need a chassis ground So I think probably just come over here. I think that's quite easy one. Just come right there um, That's probably the easiest one to do actually because there's a nice little bolt there for us And then that gives us time to come down here and take off the igniter. God, I'm excited to start I don't really know why it's probably gonna run exactly the same, but I don't know, the CA boys have said this makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Look at it from here with the Arik Colpots just like standing out. <laughs> Love to see it. Last thing we've got to do before we can start it is we just need to unbolt this igniter, which I'm tightening there. Loosen off the igniter, put in our little delete loom and then fire her up and we can actually go for a drive providing it fires up alright and we can actually see what boost it's running because I need remember from last episode when I put the boost gauge in I need to see what boost it's running this thing is so ugly I'm so glad we're taking it off there it is that is an igniter everybody and they cause tons of issues when they break we went through like three of them uh, everyone has issues with these people sell them for a bit of money as well because as you said they always break so we're going to keep all of everything we take off. Okay, so the coal packs are on, the wiring's on, the ignited bypass is on. <laughs> Let's see if it starts. I don't know why I'm nervous, but I'm nervous. Oh, we got crunk. We got spark. Oh, yeah. Can't fully tell just yet, not gonna lie. Um, it feels like it cranks stronger. It feels like it's ticking a bit stronger as well, but I don't know, that might just be a bit of a placebo effect. Um, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I'm buzzing my tits off to go for a drive. I've not been for a drive in this for like two weeks. Buzzing my tits off. Let me just make sure everything's right. I need to cable tie the wires because the igniter isn't bolted down now. It's like pushing towards the manifold. So let's cable tie that back. Cable ties, and we'll go for a spin. Okay, here we go. This is the, uh, the first run, the first run with, uh, a fair few mods to be fair so we have the the new rear calipers which i've rebuilt so I need to make sure that they're all right bled all right not sticking etc i've not shut the boot to my audi great um i also need to check the boost gauge what boots are running and obviously make sure it's running well with the uh with the r8 coal packs we've got quite a few things to do on this drive and it's fun because i've not drove this car in quite a while to be fair so i'm very excited just to drive the damn thing and have it running and especially more excited to uh to see what it drives like with all these mods it feels like it's idling way smoother with these coal packs i'm not gonna lie i'm not the sort of person to bullshit like if, it, if i genuinely think it's not made a difference i'll tell you idle is so much smoother feel the idle oh my god that's like made such a difference 
the idle and just the whole drivability of it. Oh my God, it sounds so much smoother with those coil packs. Like before, it was always like chasing the rev kind of, <laughs> but now it's just, burr. it sounds so healthy. It's made such a difference. I do think I need a better boost gauge. This boost gauge is, doesn't seem that accurate to be fair. So 10 PSI is around 0.7 bar just under so if we go over 0.7 we know we're over boosting i don't think we will be but it's just nice to know we'll put our foot down in a second and uh see what we're making but them coal packs fuck it uh, it just runs so much smoother so we'll try and give it a run here if we can on this No, we're not going over 0.5 bar on that gauge. Even if it is a little bit off, it's only going to be like 0.6. So, yeah, I believe we are running standard power. I actually think this boost gauge, this boost gauge is like 0.2 of a bar out because right now it should be reading like zero, but it's reading like minus three, minus 0.3. So I think I'm going to add. I need, I need a better boost gauge. That was like fucking 14 pounds. I, I just, I don't even know why I got it. Uh, buy cheap, buy twice, right? So on that calculation, it should be like 0.6 bar because um, it was running to like 0.4 so it's boosted it's standard boost which is good that's what standard boost should be which is good news I mean, it means i'm gonna be feeling a lot more comfortable putting my foot down now to be honest so we're back home everything went well we're, um, our rear brakes seem fine um, we have got one little problem which was i felt something smelling so i come under the bonnet it's this this bit here so you see how that's touching the manifold that bit of rubber there the new silicon hose for the heater matrix is longer out than the other one so i even need to cut it and push it forward all for the time being i've just been pulling it it's a bit hot so i've just been pulling it and then cable tying it around the other one there is someone did put a bit of rubber around it to obviously to you know to resolve the heat but that keeps smoking and it keeps smelling so we need to before we go out tonight just make make sure we just pull that hose over here a little bit and cable tie it over there have done that before but I've obviously cut the cable tie off to take something out, but yeah, that's getting pretty hot in there. The whole engine bay does get hot. Um, I've thought about venting the bonnet, but with all the old wire in there, it's probably just gonna cause more issues than it solves. So uh, I'm gonna let the car cool down. I've got to go in and edit a video, which is probably the last video you've seen about the Audi being foot, but it drives great. I can't wait to uh, drive. We're actually going to, we're going to a classic car meet tonight. There's actually a pub around the corner for me and they're doing classic car nights every Wednesday at six uh, called the Dick Turpin. Um, and it's 27 degrees today. So I, I imagine it's going to be busy. So we're going to take it there tonight. So I'm going to let the car cool down, sort that thing, go inside, edit a video. We're going to go and clean the car once it cools down a little bit as well. Hopefully it does. Uh, and then go to this meet later. So I'll take you along for that. So for now, I'll catch you in a little bit. So we just went to that meet and uh, I was sat there and we was like, oh, if another S13 comes, it's going to be sick. And then my mate just rocked in. Woohoo! There he is! We're on there. We're on a... Oh, that's not... Yeah, there he is! Woohoo! So we both just did simultaneous sends out of the show, which was fucking awesome! <laughs> When we got, everyone was like, two S13s, oh my god, everyone started filming. Hey! Mate, you didn't even look! <laughs> I want some more power, you sound sick! What power's yours? 300. 340. I can't wait. <laughs> so much fun. I didn't film much of the meat, sorry everyone. Um, we waited an hour and a half for food, so we were just sat there waiting for fucking booze. Um, but, that was cool leaving. I'm pretty sure we made some people's nights as well, because everyone was just being boring. I mean, drive responsibly guys. Uh, don't send it, drive responsibly. But, don't be scared.